In this video, I'm going to show you how to make seamless swimsuit bottoms. We're going to need a couple things to get started. First, you're going to need a quarter to three eight inch swimsuit rubber elastic, a loop turner, which looks like a scary medical device, and your front and back pattern pieces and your lining and self fabrics. First, let's sew the crotch. Leave a small opening on your lining fabric so that you can turn your work inside out. Now let's stitch all of our side seams. Place your outside piece inside of your lining piece. Pin them at the leg opening with right sides together. Now let's play the elastic at the leg opening. Another thing I want to call out here is the tension of the elastic. Since this is for seamless construction, if you use too much tension on your elastic, your garment's going to look very bunchy when it's turned right side out. Also, the more tension you use, the more it's going to squeeze and maybe in some really undesirable spots. I'm going to apply my elastic with my serger using this elastic foot that was made for my machine. Whether you're working on a serger or a regular sewing machine, I highly recommend that you get an elastic foot for your machine. It's just going to make applying elastic so much easier. It keeps the elastic in the right place and you can adjust your tension. If you don't have a serger, don't fret. You can apply your elastic using a three-step zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Make sure your seams are lined up and your allowance is going in the same direction. Once you arrive at where you started, overlap your elastic by about a half an inch. That's going to keep everything nice and secure. Remove your pins and flip your work right side out. Next we're going to pin and stitch your other leg opening. This part can be a little confusing, so pay close attention. I like to start at the side seam. I just think this is the easiest way to turn your work over without getting confused. Pinch your right sides together at the side seam of the lug opening. 
If you do a good job making sure that your seams are lined up, then everything else should fall into place. going to be sewing in a loop. So you're going to have one side totally encased inside of the other and then you're going to gently tug through and pull along as you sew. Gently, that's the key word. Push the encased fabric over to the left side of your presser foot so that you don't accidentally catch it while you sew. I think it's easiest to start sewing this leg opening a little bit before the crotch seam. Make sure that your seam allowances are going in the same direction as you sew. If you're using pins to help you guide your work, which I usually don't, make sure that you're removing them as you go. You're going to want to gently pull the work through as you sew, but you don't want to tug too hard and be pulling too hard on your fabric as you're sewing, because then you're going to have some ugly ripples that you just don't want in your seam. Now let's flip our work right side out. Here's how you use the loop tuner to turn your work around again. By this point you should have both leg openings stitched and we're just going to take our loop turner and put it through this hole that you left in the crotch seam. The loop turner should be sandwiched in between the self and the lining fabrics of either the front or the back side of your bottoms. Do your best to hook right sides together because next we're going to pull this waistband through the crotch hole and finish that last seam. Once I have my right sides together, I just like to mark it with a pin so that I don't get confused. Keep pulling through the crotch hole until one side of your bottoms is completely encased inside of the other. We're going to be sewing the waist seam in a loop, just like we did with the second leg opening. As you can see here, I have the back of my bottoms fully encased inside of the front of my bottoms. Pin your right sides together starting at the seams.
Now let's stitch that waist seam. I'm going to start at one of the side seams so that I can get everything all lined up. One thing to note here is that if your side seam length at the hips is too narrow, you're going to have a really difficult time sewing through this channel without sewing the other side of the fabric. So if you're using one of my bottom patterns, then you're all set. But if you're self-drafting a pattern or using another pattern that's not one of mine, I recommend making sure that your side seam length is at at least one and a half inches. If you want your hip straps to be really narrow, then this method may not work for you. This might be really difficult the first time that you do it, and you might end up sewing the other side of your fabric, which is what you really don't want to do. But just be easy on yourself and remember that the more you practice, the better you get, and the more times you sew this way, the easier it is. Just do your best to keep the side that's encased to the left of your presser foot so that you're not catching it while you sew and pull as you go but don't pull as you sew. If you made it here without sewing the other side, then congratulations. Now we're going to turn these bottoms right side out again through the crash hole opening that we left. Now let's close our crotch hole opening with a straight stitch on a regular sewing machine. If you're wondering, no, I don't normally keep my two sewing machines this close to each other. Um, just for the purposes of this video, I wanted to have some accessories on my desk and I have a really small sewing table. Make sure you secure the stitch with a couple of back stitches and you are all set and there you have it. There are a lot of other methods out there for how to sew seamless construction bottoms but this is the method that I find works the best and provides the most professional looking results. I really hope this video helped you and thank you for watching.